I can't quite believe that it's already September, which means that Valentine's Day and 2024 is just around the corner, which is scary. But alas, we shall just move past that for a hot second. September has always felt like the perfect opportunity to hit reset. It's always felt like the beginning of a new year. And I think that in North America, school kicks off, autumn transition is happening. And I just thought, you know what? I am gonna continue along my path of kind of hitting reset leveling up, recalibrating, and I wanted to bring you along, bring you behind the scenes. In this video, I very specifically want to talk you through three super simple money habits that I have cultivated over the past few years that have been super helpful in terms of building and maintaining a profitable business. And those of you guys who are inside the Flower Boss Academy already know that my intention for the month of September is to really lean in to simple habits to create bigger, better outcomes. I'll be totally honest and tell you that I used to be so scared to think about and to talk about money, particularly in the floral design industry, because it's not a thing that people talk about. <laughs> so if you are a floral designer, if you're an ambitious floral designer who wants to start actually making money in your flower business, I'll be the first to tell you that you are in exactly the right place. One of the things that I did not realize was that getting good at managing money is simply about having better systems and habits in place. Nobody was born knowing how to read spreadsheets and I was so intimidated and so scared for the longest time in my business. It's like I knew I wasn't making money. The bank balance was not going up. But I walked around for months and in actual fact years wishing that somebody else would come in and solve the problem for me. Until I read this book. If you have never heard of Scott Pape, if you've never heard of The Barefoot Investor, that's completely normal. He's actually an Australian author, an Australian financial advisor, and an Australian person who really is on a mission to empower humans <laughs> to take control of their finances and to not be so intimidated and scared by money. I will link below his book because even if you don't live in Australia, the way that he teaches you how to take control of your future, how to really drop the shame and the fear of looking at your money, for me, his philosophy has been so helpful. Today, I wanted to walk you through the three habits that I'm really leaning into when it comes to money management in my flower business, and I'm gonna walk you through it all step by step. The other thing I'm gonna do is, because I've already set the template up, I'll just Gonna link below the spreadsheet that I'm gonna walk you through. Even if you're not good at spreadsheets, if you're super intimidated by spreadsheets, this one's super, super simple. So don't be scared, quite literally. <laughs> it's totally fine. Before we actually jump onto the computer, I just wanna take a second, cause even if you don't wanna grab his book, <laughs> I wanna just read this out for you. If you have that little voice in your head that says, I'm not smart with money. So I just wanna read out for you the way that Scott Pape teaches you how to think about money. And this for me is like the crux of really taking control of your finances and taking control of your business. He says, Here's you and your thought being, I'm not that smart with money. Here's me, no one is born smart with money. It's a learned skill, like driving, and it has more to do with your behavior than your brains. This explains why I know a lot of so-called financial experts who don't have two bob to run together and why I also know wealthy people who never finished high school. You don't need to be a financial expert to win with money. It's much more important to start than it is to be smart. And remember, you're in luck. You've got me as your independent tour guide to financial independence. The way that he he just presents this really disarming perspective was so helpful for me because I had so much shame and judgment about myself when it came to looking at our finances. Quite literally, I knew that we weren't making money. I wasn't seeing the bank balance increasing. I didn't have thousands of dollars in savings and our business was barely able to cover the invoices and the bills that just kept coming in. But the way that Scott Pape really invites you to embrace the discomfort and just take so much of the emotional charge out of the process, for me, it was so helpful. So I just wanna invite you to take that same perspective and know that you don't have to beat yourself up. You already know in your bones that you're not making enough money and that's why you're watching this video. It's totally fine because I was in that exact spot as well. I just want you 
you to know exactly what Scott Pape said, where it's not about being smart, it's simply about making the decision to start. So let's get in to the three habits. So the first habit that I like to build into my system, and I like to do this at least once a year, <laughs> if not more, depending on your current life situation, is to know your numbers and to know your numbers when it comes to how much it costs you as a human to live your life. So the thing about running a business is that our finances in our business can have a direct impact on our personal life and our finances in our personal life will influence how we run our business. So there is a major overlap and it's very different to when you're going to work in a job for somebody else because you get a paycheck and in most cases they determine what that paycheck is but when you run a business you have so many more levers that you can pull and so many more decisions that you get to make. So then your personal finances and your business there's a lot of overlap. Now the first thing I will tell you is absolutely get help from an accountant, a financial advisor and make sure that you are running your business from totally separate bank accounts than from your personal bank account. But before we get too far into the business habits and talking about investments in your business and running your business and good habits and financial guidance for your business, it's so helpful to have a sense of what it costs you to live your life as a human. So on the spreadsheet that I will link below this video, I have outlined just various line items and you can go in and delete the ones that don't apply to you. You can also go in and add in additional line items depending on your life. But the first thing to know is just how much does it cost you to exist and <laughs> to live your life as a human. And this was one of the first exercises that I did even before we started to jump into the world of running a flower business because I was still working a corporate job and I wanted to have a good amount of savings. I wanted to have a good runway before I officially like ripped off the band-aid and said I'm not doing corporate marketing anymore. But regardless of where you are in your business flower empire building, if it's been a hot minute since you've sat down and documented how much it costs you to live your life, then that is task number one. If it's been more than two years since you've done this, go in and do it because you will be surprised at how much your cost of living has increased. Even though you know it, it's so helpful to know like this is the total number. So some line items that I have on this spreadsheet are the big ticket line items like rent or your home loan, groceries, whatever it is that you need in terms of like your personal care, health cover, getting your hair done, buying underwear, entertainment, food, car, petrol, insurance, electricity, water, gas, whatever it is you want to have in terms of you living your life, this is where you get to list that out. Take the time to think this through and really wrap your head around how much money do you need to pay yourself in terms of you being able to live the life that you want to live. Okay, so the next column that I've put on this spreadsheet, and this won't necessarily apply to everybody, but I find it really helpful to go through. If you're at the beginning stages of building your business, if you're in the first few years of getting your flower business off the ground, this exercise of figuring figuring out your startup costs. For me, it's so helpful to sit down and do some research and really think through and make some very intentional decisions about how much I need to budget to start a business from scratch. So in this case, I am pairing it back to the absolute bare bones. And I am a huge fan of embracing constraint. I have done all the studio fancy fit outs and shop leases and and shop fit outs and paid for all of the extravagant like investments in a business. This time around, <laughs> I am learning from my own mistakes and I am very intentionally deciding I'm investing intentionally and I'm investing very methodically. And as our business grows, as we increase our revenue, as I increase my profitability, I will continue to reinvest that into my business. So in terms of startup costs for a flower business, it varies depending on the kind of business you want to have, whether you're going to sign up and have a shop lease and or a shop front or a separate studio space outside of your house, your actual business setup costs. So whether you need to be incorporated, whether you need to set up an actual business structure is totally going to depend on your country and your state. Definitely look into that. Many wholesalers might actually require you 
to have a business or a business license or some sort of business structure in order for you to actually apply for a wholesaler's license. So that's worth also digging into as well. But again, all of that totally depends on your state and your country. You can hire a lawyer, you can hire a accountant to help you sort through that. And you can also do a lot with the Google. But in this case, because I'm starting with absolute bare bones, my startup costs for a flower business are incredibly low. <laughs> So the thing that's the most important to our business's success is our website, domain name, website hosting, and then the actual website template. Obviously, if you go down a different platform, I'm a huge fan of WordPress, but that is a recommendation of one. <laughs> so don't feel like you have to go down that path, but you could always pay the premium for Shopify or some other website platform. So my website setup costs are just over $300. In the line item around a rent or lease, I'm putting $0 because I am simply using space within my house for my rent, for my actual studio space. So I am not going to have a separate space outside of my house. And then you might want to put in an allocation for actual like buckets or tools, depending on what you have access to and depending on on what's around you. So I am not doing the fancy studio fit out. I literally am not putting anything in my studio at this moment in time. I'm repurposing a few things that I brought over from Australia, but instead of investing that money up front, I'm going to wait until I increase the profitability in our business and have the incremental revenue that I am going to reinvest in into my business. So at this point, I am going absolute bare bones and I've allocated $100 for buckets and tools. Because we all know the world of digital marketing and content is super important, I I've put an allocation in here for tripod, Bluetooth remote, presets, lighting. You might even want to think about painting a backdrop, but again, just I've allocated $250 in this instance. One of the biggest ticket items in terms of setting up a flower business is either creating the online catalog or building your portfolio. So I am allocating $1,500 to build the online catalog. And I'm also going to be very intentional just in terms of capturing content for social media so that that one investment can continue to pay off time and time again. So that's one of the biggest line items in terms of getting a flower business off the ground. The other thing I'm allocating is $1,000 for actual like workbench or studio setup. So if you need a workbench, this is a great way to either shop Facebook Marketplace, repurpose something that you've already got, or go out there and buy the workbench that you know is going to make your job easier. The other thing to think through is just branding and packaging. And again, just learning from my own experience, I am really embracing and constraint and I'm not going to buy the things that I know I don't need. <laughs> I've already tried that path and I wasted so much money on buying things that I didn't need. So I've allocated $500 just to sort through branding and packaging. The other two things I've put on this spreadsheet for you is incorporation or business setup fees. So that is totally dependent on the province, country, state, territory, region that you operate in. The other thing to just really think through and be methodical about is what you're going to invest in your business in terms of marketing and advertising. So because my priority in this business is going to be daily flower deliveries, I'm gonna put an allocation in to get a kickstart on Google AdWords. But again, that's just my business. You know what you want your business to look like. So just something to keep in mind in terms of where you want to allocate your startup funds in your business. So all of that blah, 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 blah is to say, after you have sorted through your personal allocation of how much it costs you to live your life as a human, the next thing to think through is what are the startup costs of your business. Obviously, if you've already got your business off the ground, then you know. <laughs> you're like, thanks, Kathleen. Let's move on to the next one. But if you're still trying to figure out how much it's going to cost you to get your flower business off the ground, then this next bit of the spreadsheet is super helpful. And when it comes to the third habit to help you grow your profitability in your flower business, it's really paying attention and understanding the costs of you keeping your business open. This was something that took me a really long time to wrap my head around and it felt like a giant leaky bucket. <laughs> If you've been around for a while, then you've probably already watched my video around the three biggest money mistakes I made in my flower business. You've probably also watched the video about how I over invested $70,000 at the wholesalers. So we all know my journey hasn't been perfect and it hasn't been pretty, but that's why I wanted to put this video together because these three habits, this process of taking control of your personal finances and setting yourself a personal budget, understanding the startup costs of 
your business. And then this third habit of paying attention to your expenses. One of the things that I did not know for the first five or six years of being a business owner is that there are true expenses and costs associated with just simply having a business. Even if you're not getting flower orders, even if there aren't enough inquiries, there are real expenses in terms of what it costs you to run your business. So instead of lumping everything into one giant P&L or one epically long, confusing and overwhelming expense summary, I like to divide it into two different categories. So the first category is understanding like what are the costs to keep the lights on in your business? Even if you don't have a separate studio or a separate shop, understanding the real costs of you running your business is so empowering. And these costs are completely separate than whatever it is that you pay for advertising and marketing, whatever it is that you might be paying in terms of staffing, and whatever it is that you might be paying in terms of costs of goods sold. Those three things are called variable costs and they vary depending on your business and depending on your sales, but every single one of us has these set line items in terms of what does it cost us to actually run our business. So in this instance, I've allocated seven different line items. And the first one is phone and internet. So in order for your customers to actually phone you and in order for you to actually be able to access the interwebs, you have to pay to access those services. That again is totally going to vary. For me, I've put in $150 a month. The next thing, and this is one of those things that I'll say if you're in your first year of business, you don't have to invest in, but I am so glad that we've built the habit of keeping our bookkeeping regular because for me, it's been such a helpful way to shift my money mindset. So we pay around $30 a month for QuickBooks. I have also in the past used Zero. Before that, I used MYOB. In my opinion, they're all a bit of a much of a muchness. Just talk to your bookkeeper, talk to your accountant in terms of which one they recommend. The next two line items, again, are totally variable, but I just find them super helpful in terms of being able to run a business. And I like to think of investing in software as a solution or a shortcut instead of investing in more people. So in this case, having social media software, so something where you could actually plan and schedule your posts if you're on Instagram and or TikTok and or Pinterest and or Facebook, whatever you're doing in terms of marketing your your business, having social media software to help plan that can be really helpful. The other thing, and I think it's worth its weight in gold, is Canva and paying for Canva Pro. This makes creating content for social media so much easier, creating graphics for your website, creating your branding, creating a logo, creating some really schmick looking graphic designs without having to pay a graphic designer. So that's something else that we pay for in our business. The other thing as well that you'll want to pay attention to is the utilities that it costs for you you to actually do the flowering side of things. So water, power, if you need any services in addition to that, or if you need any servicing on your cool room, all that stuff in terms of the actual management of the studio space. So regardless of whether you work from home or you actually have a separate studio or shop front, having an allocation and a budget for your utilities is super helpful. And again, if you don't know what those costs are, Google it. Another line item that I've put on our ongoing operational budget is Google Ads. So we are on track to spend approximately $40 a day on Google Ads, and that's the budget that we're gonna stick to until we decide otherwise, but that one line item for us in our business is going to be one of our single biggest expenses. So $40 a day equals $280 a week equals almost $15,000 a year. The last item that I've put on our ongoing operating expenses is insurance. And this is one of those things that I've just left as variable because it does totally depend on where you are in the world, the kind of insurance that your state requires and how much coverage you feel comfortable with in terms of your business. That's definitely one where I'm just gonna leave it blank because it's so different depending on where you operate and the requirements of your provider. One thing you'll notice that I actually don't have on this budget is any sort of cool room or any sort of installation in terms of like a flower fridge. I am gonna put a video together in a couple of weeks that just talks through ex 
exactly how we're navigating keeping our flowers fresh. That's something else that you might want to consider in terms of either your startup costs or something that might need ongoing maintenance in your business. In addition to that, just give some thought to are there any other expenses, any other things that you might want to include in your ongoing operational budget that might be ongoing education, it might be coaching, it might be some sort of investment that you know you want to make year and year within your business. This is the perfect chance to really just put that into your operating budget so that you can wrap your head around and really start to play around with your profitability and just understand how much money you need to generate in your business in order to start really seeing results. And again, all of this is outside and totally separate to the actual costs of buying wholesale flowers in your business, the costs of staffing and hiring people within your business. It's also completely separate from the paycheck you're going to write yourself. And it's completely separate to any other advertising or marketing or doing regular brand shoots, having a photographer come in and take pictures of you at work to help you build your portfolio. I have put all these things on the spreadsheet so that if it triggers any ideas or suggestions, you can totally go in and adapt this spreadsheet as you need to. But these three habits and being able to actually sit down and really wrap your head around how much it costs you as a human being to live your life, the startup costs of your flower business, the ongoing operational costs within your business, all have really helped me take charge and take control of our finances and really just start to build the habit and just take so much of the shame and the fear and the doubt of the whole process. So I highly recommend that you go follow the link below, buy the Barefoot Investor book and or download the spreadsheet that I have linked for you below. And as always, I really hope that this has been helpful, but no matter what, my whole goal with this video is to help take some of the shame and the stress out of getting your head wrapped around the finances of your business because it doesn't need to be so hard and it doesn't need to be such a mystery. And as always, my friends, I hope that this has been helpful. Please take care of yourself and have the most amazing week. And I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.